Hey guys, it's Dell from TLD Studios, and today I figured I'd make a video showing Blender users how to go about transitioning into using and adopting Substance 3D Painter into their pipeline and workflow. But before we can jump into texturing our model, we need to ensure that the low poly mesh is properly prepared. Okay, so once you have completed your detailed high poly model, you need to create a duplicate or retopologized version, which the topology is optimized for video game development and or animation. Also make sure both versions high and low occupy the same coordinates. And with the low poly model, you're gonna create seams and do a process called UV unwrap and layout. This process allows us to properly texture on top of our model and or UVs. Now, once that's complete, we can now export out both high and low poly models. All right, so when you open up Substance Painter for the first time, you're gonna get this scene here, and you can just usually close out this little pop-up, and you can go to the top left corner where it says File, go to New, and you're gonna get this pop-up here that says New Project. Alternatively, once you get used to using Substance Painter, you're gonna just press the hotkey, Control N, and get the same New Project template settings. Now, um, we're not gonna worry about the document resolution and normal map uh, format right now, because we can change these um, at any time during the project. Now, something that you want, might wanna change now, depending on the model that you're using, is where it says import settings, we have this auto unwrap feature. Now, this feature is uh, unique because what it allows us to do is um, compute an automatic UV unwrap for your character or model. Now, we already did that already in our 3D application, so I'm not gonna check this on. I'm gonna leave it how it is. Now. What you want to do is where it says file is go to select and go to the directory where you stored your low poly model so once you make your way there i'm just going to select my low poly version hit open and hit ok and it's going to pop up on our screen now and here you're going to see um maybe your your interface may look a little different so i'm going to press um f1 so you can see side by side the 3D model and your UVs. Alternatively, you can press F2 to solo back your 3D model. Pressing F3 allows you to solo your UVs. All right guys, so first things first, what I wanna do is press F2 to solo the model by itself and not see the UVs, because I think that's gonna take up a little bit of space on our UI. And um, before we get into the UI right now, I wanna go over navigation because that's really important. Um, really quick, if you press the left mouse button, you can start to paint on your, your model. So that's what you know the left mouse button does. You can press Control Z or Control Z, depending on where you're at, to um, backspace, you know, to redo a command. Now to zoom in and zoom out, what you wanna do is press Alt and right mouse click, move your mouse up or down. If you press Alt, and um, left click with your mouse, you can rotate around your model. Um, to zoom in, you can press middle mouse scroll up or down. To rotate the HDRI, which is the lighting that's lighting your character, you can hold shift and um, right click and drag your mouse left and right to do so. Um, to pan around, you can press alt and middle mouse press and move your mouse left and right to pan around your model. So that's some quick um, navigation tools that you need to get familiar with. So just practice this for a little bit. All right guys, so before we go into a spiral of confusion and learning about the UI, the smart materials, regular materials, uh, alphas, uh, gray channels and things of that sort. First, I want to do a process called baking. And that's because I have a high poly version that you guys saw a little bit earlier. Uh, this character had a bunch of details like pores on his face. He had a scar on his forehead, a uh, lip, etc. And that's why we needed to create two different versions. Now, to do the process of baking, what you want to do first is go to the right where it says texture set settings or alternatively you can go to the top right and go to where it says baking or hit the hotkey F8. So in texture set settings, what I want to do is um, I can change the, the size of my maps. So if I want the character to be 2K here set, um, you know, by default 2048, 
if I want it to be 4K, I can go down and go to 4096 by 4096, and um, I can scroll down with the middle mouse, and where it says Bake Mesh Maps, I can start to generate these mesh maps that you see here. Normal map, world space normal map, ID map, ambient occlusion, things of that sort. Now, let's click on Bake Mesh Maps. I'm gonna get this um, UI that changed, and it's showing our model here on the right, and you can you know control and navigate this the same way you would um, the other scene but what's important here is we have the output size here you can set the maps that you actually want to bake out so if you want to bake it out at 4k we can set it there um, where it says use low poly mesh as high poly mesh if you don't have a high poly version that you want to copy that detail from the high poly to the low you can uh, check this but i do have a high poly model that i want to get that detail and put it on my low poly version so i'm not going to check that i'm going to go to this um high definition mesh here locate that high poly model and hit open and once that has located the high poly here you can see the cage here now um before i go in too much detail the cage is how close your high poly is to your low poly version, if that makes any sense. And you can see it here where it says max frontal distance and max rear distance. So if I rotate the frontal distance, you'll see that it tries to match up how close or far the models are from each other. And you can kind of use this to your advantage depending on your model. So somewhere around here is fine. Um, you don't want to see any red, but this is fine for what I need it for. I'll leave it around here. Um, you don't want to check or uncheck any of these, uh, the bounding box, average normals, ignore back face for this model. Uh, for anti-aliasing, I will use uh, 16, um, where it says match. This is going to differ depending on how many parts you have to your model. I just have one. so. I don't need to worry about this too much, but if you have multiple parts, you need to name the, the, the suffix underscore low for the low poly versions and for the high underscore high. And that may not make sense to us right now, but we don't need it for this, so just ignore that for now and leave it at always. But if you needed to, you can do it by a mesh name. And here's the, the, the suffix here, so where it says underscore high and low, you have that. Now we're gonna start baking these maps out. Here on the left, where it says normal world space ID, it's going to start generating these now. And just a heads up, the baking process does take quite a bit of time. So depending on your specs and complexity of your models, it may take longer than others. And um, let's just begin. So once the baking is complete, we can go to the top right, select the paint icon. And now we can check out our model and the bakes and see if everything turned out the way it should be. And we should have that high poly model detail baked onto the low poly um, geometry. This looks good. So let's rotate the lighting around by holding shift, right click, and moving our mouse left and right. And everything looks great. I'm loving it so far. So I think it's a good time to save. So let's go to the top left, go to file, go to save, name this something unique. And in the next video, we can begin learning how to paint our model. And with that being said, please, if you like the video so far, give it a thumbs up, comment, and I'll catch you in the next one.